Greetings, everybody. Uh, hopefully this video is not too long. I guess I just wanted to share some things um, that I've been guided to speak on. I kind of just left it until it was the right divine time for me to share certain things that, you know, has been revealed to me and things like that. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, you guys probably seen, like, some of my posts. Um, I got a channeled message, and I was kind of hesitant to post it because I was like, okay, this is probably going to make some women mad or whatever. But I have to honor what Spirit is saying and post it. And I have um, have posted what I was getting, you know, basically, there's a lot of, you know, us out here, a lot of women that are believing that um, counterfeits are their one. So what I had written was verbatim, this is what I wrote. I said, just a word, but there's there's many women out here believing that the counterfeit is their one. Sadly, they have mistaken that they've met their best. However, fortunately, the best is on its way. It will be a tough, a tough pill to swallow at first. And of course, many will reject the truth within them, showing them in a million ways in one that the person they believe to be the one is in fact a counterfeit. Even worse, not even giving them an ounce of love nor attention. This person is a major distraction. Mark my words, many eyes and ears, or many eyes and hearts, maybe ears too, many eyes and hearts are going to open to truth. So I was guided to post this two days ago. And it was funny, I came across this video. Um, someone posted, she, she posted this, whoever this woman is, uh, she posted this three years ago. And it came up on my YouTube suggestions, which was weird. And the word that she used, the verbiage she used, and I'll take this as confirmation from spirit, but she, the verbiage, the, the title of her video is called How to Recognize Counterfeit Relationships, Destiny or Distraction, question mark. That word distraction. Um, I took note of some of the things that she was saying, um, and I also had, you know, whatever notes came to me, to mind, to share with you guys. But I just want to start with this and just say this. Um, I would not categorize myself as religious. I'm spiritual. I connect with God, the source, that all that is. Not a religious God, a God of all that is. A source that loves us, the divine creator. Um, and what I was getting... The other night, I think it was Saturday night, um, I was led to write this um, scripture down. And the scripture is, for the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but have divine power to destroy strongholds. So that's Second Corinthians 10 and 4. Um, basically, what it's saying is that the weapons of our warfare, those of us that... Um, you know, get tested or those of us that, um, could be up for, uh, let's say attacks or to be distracted by things that don't serve us or to keep us stuck that our warfare is not of the flesh. Our weapons that we use are not of our flesh or our, our earthly power, um, physical strength and power, but divine power. So, um, at this time, I feel like it's very, very, very important to use your discernment with the type of people that you're linking yourself up with because in this season and time, if you're on your way to um, getting alignment with your path and your, your purpose, because the times that we're living in right now, it's really important that people utilize their gifts, that they tap into their life purpose. And I've noticed another attack on a lot of people is suicide is very strong right now and people feeling hopeless and depressed and people really struggling with their mental health um even more so not to say that it was never 
something that people were dealing with or struggling with or growing through, but it's even more evident. It's like something is, you know, um, causing people to lose their hope and faith, especially if we've lost connection with our source. It's easy for us to feel like we have no connection to anything or anybody. We're just here. You know, our life is just in shambles. And I myself struggle with the the um, suicide spirit myself. And someone close to my family um, attempted suicide. And I, spirit guided me in that moment. I didn't know what to do. But um, another family member was like, I need your help. They're, they're doing this or doing that. And the door was locked. And an energy just came over me to just bang the door. Like, like break the door down. Like, I instantly just was like, the instincts just kicked in push the door open and I busted the door open and grabbed um their source that they were trying to take their own life with and it's it's very uh scary at this time like and we could all be dealing with our own things and this is outside of love and relationships and and I say all this to say that we are not wrestling with flesh and blood we're wrestling with as they say spirits principalities in higher places you know things that we can't see to call yourself spiritual and not believe that um there is a such thing as spiritual warfare you're denying a part of your spirituality to just only look at one side of things and you're doing yourself a disservice and others a disservice by ignoring um the other side of things because who's to say that you're not here to shift the planet you call yourself a light worker but yet you deny that the shadow aspect of of life and of this universe and of this reality um but yeah spirit led me to this because a lot of people are being tested and um i was drawn to scripture as well like spirit just leads me to scripture and and i really connect with the word because it really does make a lot of sense to things that go on personally in your life. You know, you have to have some type of spiritual foundation with something. And um, the Bible has never really um, been something popular in the spiritual community because everybody's like, oh, well, that's associated to religion. Get rid of it, throw it away. It's um, meant to condemn you. But when you really look at it, it's really not. The Bible is really actually very amazing, very powerful which is why witches use it. People talk about, oh, you know, I'm a witch, but witches be using the Bible to, you know, affirm things and to, um, you know, get things moving, you know, use it as spell word. Anywho, so I was guided to James 1 and 2 through 3, and it says, Consider it all joy, my brethren, when you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. And then uh, you have James 1 and 12. Blessed is a man who perceives under trial, or perseveres, excuse me, a man who perseveres under trial. For once he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Meaning, those who go through their trials and tribulations and those tests, and they persevere through it, they don't waver, they don't fall. They don't fold. They will receive the crown, which is enlightenment. The crown, this crown chakra, enlightenment. Initiation, awaken, leveling up, basically, in your spiritual self. Also, to identify the spirit is one of the ways that you, you're you able, when you identify what it is that you know, you're up against within yourself or outside of yourself, when you can identify the spirit of things, you have a um you have a better chance at fighting it right persevering through it so i was drawn to first john 4 and 1 which says beloved do not believe every spirit but test the spirits to see whether they are from god for many false prophets have gone out into the world which is interesting in this time um, because there's a lot of information out there. There's a lot of people speaking out of term, not speaking in divine will. 
just saying whatever they want to say. They don't, they're not thinking with the divine mind, divine heart. So, you know, they're speaking out of ego or they're speaking out of malice or they're speaking out of greed or deception um, or out of hurt or pain or wounds. Um, but in this case, what it's saying is to test every spirit, meaning if you're having a negative thought about something, you got to ask yourself, where is this coming from? Where is this producing? Is what this person saying to me, is this coming from God? Is this something that I should be listening to? Is this something I should be watching? Is this something that I should be drinking? Is this a place that I need to be going? You got to test every spirit. When, when you call yourself light workers, you call yourself divine this, divine that, you got to walk in divine authority. You, you don't walk through life blind. It's, yeah, it's a responsibility and a lot of people don't want that. Um, they want to be able to just pass off things and say, oh, the universe did it. Oh, Mercury retrograde did it. Or, oh, this person did this to me. Rather than connecting and trying to understand what's going on with you, what's going on around you, why do you feel what you feel, you have to be more discerning and aligned with source and say, is this for me? Is this the path for me? Is this the person that I should be? Um, dating? Is this the person I should be friends with? Is this a job for me? Is this serving my highest good in the end? You got to think about all of that. Even down to, should I buy this book? <laughs> because you got to be discerning about what you take into yourself, what you take into your spirit, your mind, your heart. You got to be discerning about all of that. So how do you find what it is that in your life that may not be of your highest good or let's say what a stronghold is and what's a distraction how do you find out what that is and i was led to matthew six thirty three, which says seek first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all things shall be added unto you so when you seek the goodness of a source you seek your creator and you're seeking what's right for you what's of your highest good you're going to easily identify what's not of your highest good you're easily going to understand and understand what that is. It will be revealed to you. And you can even ask, Spirit, show me what it is in my life that needs to go. What is it within me that I need to work through? What is it? Um, Spirit will show you and tell you. However, Spirit speaks to you. Then you have deliverance. How to deliver yourself from the strongholds, from the distractions, from certain things and this does require discipline and I want to say this that to whom much is given much is required that when and I'm speaking to those of you that know that you have some type of calling or purpose in your life or you you feel like you're on a path that's much more than where you are and and you might feel like inspired to maybe help people or inspired to make changes and things like that that if you've been called to such things you know that much is required of you that you can't afford to be spiritually lazy spiritually passive fear is not of god as they say it's not divine source energy that's of high vibration of love fear is not of high vibration but um, deliverance, um, I was guided to three scriptures. <laughs> um, but it says Isaiah, Isaiah 53 and 5. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. Psalms 34 and 4. I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all of my fears. Galatians 4 and, or 5 and 1. It says, It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. So by that Christ energy, by tapping into that source of energy and love and seeking freedom, that we are already free. It's an illusion that we are stuck, that we are, we're trapped. It's an illusion. Once we 
identify that, okay, that's not something that is natural to me. This is something that either I picked up along the way or this is a result of things that I've experienced in life, but this doesn't belong to me. You free yourself. Leave the past in the past. Leave the past in the past. It's a new season. It's a new time. It's a new thing that wants to take place in your life. Isaiah 43, 18 through 19 says, forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? Am I making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland? So what Spirit is saying, let the former things go. You've, it's already been done. You're free. I'm doing a new thing in your life. New things are coming. Do you not feel it? Do you not see it? I'm making way for you in these times. I'm moving. I'm shifting things. So how do you prep yourself? Prep yourself and protect yourself and guard yourself at all times. Um, the most popular, or one of the most popular um, Bible verses references the armor, putting on the armor of God. Um, and it's Ephesians 6, 10, and 18. Hopefully I said that right. Um, the first is finally being strong in the Lord, meaning we don't lean on our own strength. We lean on the strength of our divine creator and his power their power take it how you will that divine source power putting on the full armor of god so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes meaning to protect yourself from those dark energies and those dark forces if you believe in all these angels and all these light beings then you ought to know that there's some other stuff too <laughs> it, it is just what it is for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. So there is a, a battle. We live in a realm where we eat shitty food, where they're poisoning our water, burning and cutting down our trees, cutting down nature, charging us for free water, <laughs> electricity, um, shooting our kids up with poisonous things putting um, vile things on TV, on the internet, to program people's minds, um, putting subliminal messages in our TV and our music. We live in a dark world. And it's, it's teaching us things that are not of divine balance and order. So we are fighting a battle. And when you're operating in that energy of being on the side of divine and of love, you're going to come against things. That's just what it is. And you have to think about it when you have those dark moments where you struggle. Why am I here? I don't, I don't want to be here. I must not be good enough. I'm not loved. I'm not, you know, I don't have a purpose. I don't feel special. I should just leave. And you have something telling you that you shouldn't be here. Yeah, just leave. Yeah, you're not good enough. Or you may have people have said that to you as a child and you stuck with it, stuck with you and your subconscious. You got to think. Why would that be? Where is that coming from? Because that's not of God. God has a purpose for everybody. So you have to ask yourself, where is that coming from? Because that's not of God and, and it's a purpose to get you out of here for a reason. So you got to think about it. I must have a very big purpose or very something about me significant that doesn't want me here. Something that is against um, my calling and my purpose for be being here because God doesn't just bring you here for nothing and just for your time to just be have wasted and God doesn't look at you as unworthy. God created you. You are a facet and aspect of God. Um, verse 13 says, therefore put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground and after you have done everything to stand so you'll be able to f confront and face your adversity within that energy and within that power. So back to, to whom much is given, much is required. Luke 12, 48 says, He that know that knew not and committed things worthy of stripes shall be beaten with few stripes. For whom unto whomever much is given, of him shall much be required. And to 
and to whom men have committed much of him, they will ask them more. So those that um, may not be given those, you know, divine assignments or those callings in their lives or whatever it is, they may be punished in all of that, or it feels like they're being punished and all that. And you might look at them and be like, oh, well, they're just getting slaps on the wrist, but I'm over here. I'm just suffering. And you look at it in that sense. But it's like boot camp. To whom much is given, much is required. Spirit sees your value and sees your worth. You're not here just to lollygag. Now back to the women or those that are caught up in, in counterfeit relationships or distractions of any kind, friendships and all of that, that are not of your highest good, that are not divinely um, of your highest good. And this time is very crucial because I feel like, and how Spirit revealed it to me is that there's a lot of people that um, have fallen for the counterfeit. And a lot of it plays different roles. It could be due to our own um, woundedness, you know, um, lack of self-love and um, abandonment issues and rejection. So if at the wrong time, the wrong thing could feel like the right thing and the right person at the right time if you're not discerning and if you're not careful. And sometimes we are allowed to experience certain things for lessons to strengthen us and to help us further heal. So we do have to come across certain people and certain things at certain times, but you have to be discerning. Everything has an expiration date. And I really feel that we've been taught backwards and, um, you know, this new age movement has really messed with a lot of people's minds with false information of what a divine connection really is because we've been taught in this new age stuff with this twin flame dynamic or stuff backwards that a divine connection is um it's one of neediness and ownership and entitlement and um accepting breadcrumbs, um, love bombing, people going against uh, nature and saying to themselves, feeling justified because they feel chemistry or connection to someone or because they had an experience that validates their yearning or desire for a mate, um, that lack, that person that made them feel something or they felt that spark with them that they, they feel entitled to say, oh, I don't care if this person has a girlfriend or a boyfriend. I don't care if they're married. I don't care about this. Um, they're my person. And it's very destructive. And I, I'm tired of seeing it. And I'm not judging anybody. I have compassion because I dealt with situations where a few times where I felt like I met my one. And it's very easy to believe that when you have a strong chemistry, a spiritual chemistry and attraction towards someone. And it seems to be something happening and something going on. But when you really look at it, nothing, there's, it's not producing anything. It's not producing anything of value. It's not a stable foundation or situation. At that point, you are going off of things that you're seeing reflected into your experience, such as signs of synchronicities, dreams, um, and you could very well have a connection to that person that can, and that person could very much well desire you as well, but not everybody is ordained to be with you just because you desire something doesn't mean that it's meant for you and vice versa. So I see a lot of people, um, chasing love, pining after it, losing peace and sleep over it, spending money and thousands of dollars on it to understand it, to get it. And people lying to other, you know, lying to these people. It, it's just like, <clears throat> I'm laying down. Tell the truth. Like, really, and, and be honest with self because it's not easy. Like I said, it's going to be a revelation for some people that's not easy. That what they thought was divinely meant to be was not It's not, and it really hope it really hurts me because 
Um, it really hurts me because I know that we deserve better. And I'm talking as a collective of people that are wounded. And by me even saying this, people will probably come at my neck because the twin flame thing has become like a religion. People have made their so-called twins their idols. They, they've completely written off connection to themselves and connection to source, their creator. They've placed um, man, and when I say man, I mean human, um, in the seat of that, that, that source where they really need that love. To know what love is, you got to know what God's love is for you, that source love for you. And you got to be able to love yourself before you could truly say that you love another. You can't say that you really know what love is if you don't know the love that the divine has for you, the source, the creator has for you. And a lot of people that are attracted to this, you you notice the, the unrest and the unsettled energy in a lot of people that resonate with this twin flame dynamic stuff. It's people that... Um, desperately feel like they have to be connected to a person and that um their existence is 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 validated by this connection or another person outside of them they're no longer an individual um committing all of their energy and their time to a a person for some people this person is never even um, spoken to them, never even took them out on a date, never kissed them. For some people, uh, this person could have been someone you had a connection with, had a fling with, and this person is constantly being inconsistent and ghosting you. They could be in another relationship. The thing about this is, is God is your creator that loves you is never going to put you in a union with someone call it divine because that's not divine that's not how the divine operates will never put you in a situation with anybody that is not ready to to commit to you that is not that doesn't have the capacity to love you and sadly we've been taught that that's normal we see it on tv we see it on love and hip-hop we see it on social media couples oh they look cute together they got matching jordans or oh they got matching bmws and Oh, they, you know, they look happy. They have the house. They have, you know, they have the kids. But that's all you see. The couples that are actually um, stable and grounded and have a solid foundation and that they are humble in spirit because a lot of what you see is people that are operating off of their ego and we think that these people are in love. You can't be in a relationship with someone that is not fully open and available to commit to you. Someone that is not even able to commit to the life circumstances that they have. They could be people that don't even take accountability for themselves or because a lot of women, and this is just, this is outside of reading and all of that and what I do and what I see, like, you know, in the spiritual community, I'm talking about like personal experiences where, a lot of women settle in relationships with men that can't keep a car, they can't keep a job. Um, they don't know how to commit to a person. They may have another woman, and that's a red flag when they have another woman, and but they're over here with you. They That's a red flag that this person is non-committable. And if they feel like this person is not for them, then they need to drop kick this person and get them out of their life. And if it be that this person is meant to be with you, then you need to live your life until that connection comes together in the way that's suitable for the both of you with integrity and respect for yourself and for anybody else that's involved. Um, it's, it's a lot of settling for less than what you deserve and it, it's not easy to let go of a fantasy and let go of an ideal of what you thought was meant to be or what you think should be meant to be or what you just if you're not willing to let go that's a problem anything that we become to attach to becomes a god it becomes an idol anything that is not created you that is not brought you here should not be something that you 
cannot live without. That's not normal. That's not healthy. And if you can't separate from the idea that maybe something is not for you, that's not of your highest good, especially if it's showing you that it's not of your highest good. And it, it's very sad, but I realize that um, people are only going to take what they feel that they're cap they're they're worthy of and sometimes some people don't see that something's not the highest good until it's time for them to I was in that seat plenty of times in my own personal experiences I was in a toxic relationship for six years and my grandma would always tell me basically to to leave that I deserve better that my daughter deserved better but I couldn't leave I really wanted it to work and I tried to make it work and I knew we were bad for each other it wasn't one-sided we were both toxic to each other and you have to understand that spirit sends distractions in your life um I don't feel like no I'm not gonna say that God doesn't do that the lower vibrational energies will send distractions in your life to tempt you and to throw you off your path. So it was funny that when I channeled that message and I came across this video um, of this woman speaking and she said something that was so needed 